How to Stay Safe During Chemistry Labs, a production brought to you by the Chemistry 3 class of 2006. Rule number four, never touch experiments that aren't yours. Ooh, chemicals I don't understand. Do not touch. Rule number five, never drink in the laboratory. Rule number six, never perform unauthorized experiments. Hmm, huh. Mr. Arrow didn't say anything about water and this powder. Eh, well, I wonder what will happen. The water never hurt anything. Rule number eight, no pranks in the laboratory. Rule number nine, keep papers out of the lab area. Let's just get this over with. Yeah. I hate chemistry. Oh. Oh. Rule number 10. Always know where your fire extinguisher is. Um, where's the fire extinguisher? Oh my god, where's the fire extinguisher? It's all on fire. Where's the fire extinguisher? I don't know. You, ah. you totally had to ask. I don't know. Where, where is it? Where's the, you know, I, when you put acting like an idiot, where's the fire extinguisher? Where is the fire extinguisher? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh. It's, all, it's all on fire. Oh. Rule number 11, never put your head in the fume hood. Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm mixing up some pretty hazardous gas. But you know what? I can't see if it's reacting or not. This fume hood is just too glazed over. Let's find out.
Rule number 13. Never pour unknown chemicals down the drain. Be sure that you always dispose of chemicals properly. Never pour a chemical down the drain that you are unsure of or that your instructor has told you not to pour down the drain, especially if you're unsure of what it might do. You may end up with something like we see here, a metallic disgusting buildup, a leaky sink, and a big bill from the school. Rule number 14, always use proper lab equipment. Always use proper lab equipment, such as this ring stand. Never try to make your own or use improper lab equipment, like this. Rule number 15, never touch your face in the laboratory. Never touch your face and hands while in the laboratory. My face really itches. Rule number 18, always wear goggles in the laboratory. You should right. always work with goggles when heating chemicals in the laboratory. Mm. You might get chemicals in your eye. Ah! 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 Rule number 19, never have long hair or jewelry in the laboratory. You should never wear long, dangly jewelry or have long hair while working in the laboratory. You should tie it up. You could set your hair on fire or possibly knock something over with your heavy jewelry. Rule number 20, always wear a lab apron. Hi. I don't know why I have this shirt on backwards, but that's irrelevant. When you're working in a laboratory with a dangerous chemical, you should always wear a lab apron. Uh, I'm not sure why I had these balloons either, but I cannot stress the importance of a lab apron. I mean, y you know, chemicals, they rip through, well, skin for one, so you want that extra layer of protection. But they can also put holes in your clothes, or just, they could do tons of crap. I don't know. Rule number 23, the proper technique of wafting. Hi, I will now demonstrate to you how to correctly waft chemicals in the laboratory. Never stick your nose right up to the chemical and inhale deeply. Waft like this. This is the proper technique. Rule number 24, never put back unused chemicals into the container.
Rule number 25, how to and how not to pipette. In order to pipette, you should do this. Take your pipette and your pipette ball. Place the pipette ball on the pipette. Make sure you remove any excess liquid into a container you're not going to use. Then, squeeze the pipette ball just a little bit. Be careful not to get too much liquid into the pipette or you'll get water in the pipette ball, but that's a mess. Stick the tip well into your liquid, release slowly to fill your pipette up with water. When you have the desired amount, go to your container, remove the pipette ball, and the liquid will come out. If you think you're getting too much, you can just stick the pipette ball back on and stop it. And that's how you do it. And now, secrets. Now what Greg might have said to you might seem like common sense, and using this bulb might be an obvious thing to do. There are several people who like to take shortcuts and have trouble using that bulb. And this pipette is a nice cylindrical tool, and some people think we can use this like a straw. And although it's never a good idea to use this as a straw, and you might think it would be pretty obvious, I have known some people to actually have done this. When I was in college, I worked at a fake cheese plant, and we had to um, measure some material. So we took some samples of cheese, mushed it up with water and stuff, and we had to pipette an amount out. And I have known some people actually to take that shortcut and use their mouth and suck it up through. And it's a little bit dangerous, especially with the chemicals. Fortunately, we were just working with cheese, and so if you happened to goose, you would have gotten a bad mouthful of warm, watery cheese. Rule number 26. Never touch broken glass with your bare hands. Okay, Greg broke more glass once again. So, I guess I'll have to clean it up. Mr. Arrow, I think I may have cut myself. Um, just a little bit. Um, yeah, what should I do about this? Rule number 27. Never put hot glassware in cold water. Hot glassware and cold glassware, as we already discussed, are very similar. But hot glassware, especially when it's transferred into a much cooler environment suddenly, can easily shatter. You should always be careful when making something like this happen. Rule number 28. Never leave an experiment unattended. Okay, add this to that. Hey, John. John, oh, come here. Oh, come oh. here. Rule number 29. Always test glassware before touching it. Always make sure you test glassware properly, especially if it could be hot. Hot and cold glassware look very similar. Test with the back of your hand, like this. This doesn't feel hot, so I can pick it up. <laughs> Rule number 30. Never put your head over a beaker with heating chemicals. You should never look into a beaker that's being heated. And here's why. Ah! 
Okay, action. Let's get it going. Oh, now it's going. Okay. Okay. Ready? Action. Yeah. Never touch your face and hands while in the laboratory. But my face really itches. Go. What? <laughs> Uh, okay. I wonder what Greg's doing. Uh, let's just get it done. Here we go. Come on, man. Action. You should always wear goggles in the laboratory, especially when working with heating substances. You might be able to get it. You might be really smart. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but I don't need it right now. So I'll just say here and get it later. Well, I didn't use it, so I guess I can put it back. Oh no. Okay. Where is it? When you're working in the laboratory, well, you gotta start over start. again. Okay, no. Ready? Yeah. Mr. Arrow. <laughs> That's it? You yeah, have you to do it a bunch of times. Hi. This is 18 more. This is 18 <laughs> more sulfuric acid. It exploded on me, and I burned myself. Wait, Yay! Wait. Yep. Dun 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 oh, dun, yeah. dun dun dun. Check dun. out that baking soda. It burns. If you ever, if you ever, ever spill sulfuric acid, put the what calcium carbonation on the table. <laughs>